So life in Mexico is wonderful for most of the people, most of the time, but every once in a while something goes wrong. And there have been a number of people here in La Paz who have had some serious medical issues. I just talked to someone whose neighbor tipped over their four-wheeler and was very seriously injured. We're gonna talk about that person specifically, I think, in, in this video. Um, someone else who was you know, hit by a car on his bicycle. So bad things happen anywhere. And because it's Mexico, healthcare is a little different. And Mexico has a wonderful healthcare system. Let me I just put that out there. But sometimes you wanna get back to your home country. And for me, you know, that would be going back to the United States and getting there when you're in the middle of a medical emergency is complicated. And so I have Shelly here with me today and she is with SkyMed. So I'm gonna have her talk more about what it does, but the gist of it is when everything's going to hell, they'll get you somewhere safe and they will make sure it's all handled for you. So we're gonna talk in this video about the things that you should consider about you know, planning for when things go wrong, how much things might cost, um, you know, some of the things that, uh, some of the ways things will work so that you can be ready for if things go sideways down in Mexico. So Shelly, thank you so much for being here. And, uh, and also I want to mention, I'm going to mention this again at the end, but Shelly and I are going to be meeting in person this coming Sunday. So if you're here in the La Paz area or Baja California, sir, um, We'll make sure you stick around to the end to hear about that. But Shelly, thank you for being here online with the folks that are watching. And why don't you start just uh, kind of do your quick introduction and tell us the gist of what SkyMed does. Thank you, Brighton, for having me. I'm, I'm really very happy that I have this opportunity to share some information with uh, your viewers about SkyMed. It is a Im very important service and often we don't think about it. So what SkyMed is, is a medical emergency evacuation service. Um, we have served over 500,000 members. We've been in business since 1989, so over 30 years. We're going on 34 years. We average two member services every single day from around the world. And we are so much more than just an air ambulance service, which is why most people uh, become members in the first place, but we offer much more than than just that. And I, I think we'll talk about that some in the the video too. Yeah, well, definitely we're going to cover kind of not only what SkyMed does, but also what some other competitors might do and how you as the viewer can evaluate and choose what's best for you. So let's start out and you know with a simple question of who needs this or who needs sky med so the number one reason that we evacuate from mexico is from falls wow. right so who falls it, everybody that walks everybody that is mobile in any kind of way from you know a toddler learning to walk all the way up to a centenarian so that's a great question, Brighton. Everyone needs SkyMed, especially if you travel away from your home, even if it's just to the grocery store. And I want to say in Mexico, I've yet to make a video, but if you're watching this, you live in Mexico, watch for this because I'm going to ask, I'm going to, I'm going to crowdsource this, uh, this video, but it's, there's something we call gringo traps. And this is various things in Mexico that don't exist in the United States or Canada and could kill you or very much injure you. And for the most part, these are really big holes in the sidewalk, missing sewer covers or just big holes or um, like you're walking down the street, there's barbed wire just hanging in the middle of the sidewalk. So um, I am making a video about gringo traps. So I think it's very funny that you say that, you know, it, falls are what's causing people to leave Mexico. And it's because yeah, there's the system is set up to help you fall. 
But um, why don't you give us some examples beyond falling? I know that you've got some examples that you can share. So let's kind of, uh, let's, let's do storytelling time. First, I want to start with the caveat that any information and in any stories that I share, it is because our member has given express permission that we can share their stories. So because of HIPAA regulations, we would never share anything that a member does not want to, to have shared nor uh, when you become a SkyMed member and I'm your rep, I won't even know that you're evacuated unless you call and tell me after it's all over. So I just wanna start with that. But uh, let's start with the first example of falling. So um, in San Miguel de Allende, we know it's in the central part of Mexico. The sidewalks are problematic, as you mentioned already, and one of our members was leaving, actually leaving the hospital from visiting someone who was bit by a dog. And he was coming down the stairs, coming out of the hospital, and he slipped and he fell. And the ironic or funny part, if you want to say, is that he landed like literally right in front of an ambulance. <laughs> So the ambulance drivers picked him up, put him in the ambulance, drove him around to the emergency entrance of the hospital. Um, it was determined that he broke his shoulder in several places. It was a really bad break. And um, he decided that uh, he wanted to go to Miami where the specific orthopedic surgeon was that could fix his shoulder and the particular injuries that he had. So once he was stabilized in the hospital there, he and his wife called SkyMed and asked that we evacuate him to Miami for his surgery and recovery. So um, SkyMed, their evacuation team got together and started working right away. So he didn't need an air ambulance, right? He was stabilized, his shoulder was immobilized, and he needed a medical escort to help him. And the medical escort does two main things. Uh, one is to help you, the member who is injured, manage pain, get on and off the plane, get situated with bags, those sorts of things. But the second reason is they provide some reassurance to the airlines that, uh, yes, you're injured, but if something happens, the medical professional is there to help the member. So we arranged the commercial flight with the medical escort for him and his wife, because if you have a family plan with SkyMed, we never send one without the other. So we always arrange travel for both. And he went to Miami. He did develop some complications after his surgery. So he ended up staying in uh, Miami for a little longer than he probably would have under nor normal circumstances. And then once he was ready, SkyMed brought him and his wife back to San Miguel to finish recovering. So mm. that was uh, one fall. And we have three levels of evacuation uh, in SkyMed. So obviously we have the air ambulance. And then that was an example of the commercial with a medical escort. And uh, the third level is just commercial. And I can give you an example of the commercial uh, flights too, if you'd like. Yeah, well, actually, I hate to be gory, but do you have an example of the um, the more serious necessitating a air ambulance, or what? What even is an air ambulance? Yes, of course. So, an air ambulance is especially equipped, usually a Learjet, and it's going to have everything on the airplane that you will need uh, to be flown safely uh, from one airport from one airport to another airport and then transported by ground ambulance from the airport to the hospital where you've chosen to go. So yes, I do. So automatically, if you have a heart attack or a stroke, uh, we have moved someone in a full coma before a broken hip, those sorts of things automatically get the air ambulance. So another example of a fall in San Miguel again, she fell, uh, ended up breaking her hip. And she 
uh, her grown son was actually there visiting. She was an individual on an individual plan. So, but her son was visiting. She knew if something happened to her, she wanted to go to uh, New York City Presbyterian um, Hospital in New York. And so she fell, broke her hip. Um, the air ambulance was arranged for her once she was in the hospital, stabilized. Uh, because her adult son was there with her and there was room on the air ambulance, he got to go with her to New York. So once she was there, she was transported to the hospital, um, had her surgery, was stabilized, and then flown back to San Miguel under SkyMed Plus. Mm -hmm. And uh, her son, because he travels for work a lot, ended up being becoming a SkyMed member too. And it's the funny thing about this story is that when she was being evacuated, uh, she was actually taking pictures <laughs> and posting on uh, her social media that, hey, I'm, I'm being flown out and taking pictures of the air ambulance. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not a funny situation, but it was uh, funny that she took advantage of the situation to kind of... Uh, you know, I, show that she was being taken care of and that she was safe and that she was going to um, be sent to where she needed to be. And that's and that's really I mean, that's a great example, because if someone did not have this service um, and we're going to go into like what they might pay versus what they would pay to become a member in the first place, doing a little bit of research on this topic the complication and the stress level, you know, first the stress of just being injured in another country and going to a hospital. Most of the doctors in Mexico and specialists especially tend to speak English, but it's different and it's stressful. And to think that someone is there to take care of you and get you where you need to go back to, if you want to go back to the United States, that I think is, there, there's something to be said there that is not a monetary thing, but it's just like a, like a, take a deep breath and maybe start posting to Instagram thing. Right. And and that's correct. A lot of people would say, well, why do I need the commercial level of evacuation? Well, honestly, when you are injured and or your loved one is injured, no matter how well you know that foreign language, sometimes in a stressful situation, it all goes away, right? And so there's the stress and the worry and the fear and the unknown. And so, yes, SkyMed does provide the, the commercial uh, flights for people with less serious injuries. Um, and it's just one less thing that you have to worry about. Our evacuation team will take care of all of those arrangements for you. I do have another example if you want to hear it. Yeah, let's let's hear another example. Okay, so it is um, skin cancer, and it was a pretty aggressive carcinoma, and it was on her nose, actually. And she thought about going to Mexico City for the surgery, the Mohs surgery, but they were saying that they were probably going to have to take like half of her nose and the the Mohs was a, a fairly new uh, procedure here in Mexico. So she decided that she would go to Houston, to MD Anderson for the actual surgery. And, but it's cancer, right? It does need to be taken care of right away, but she doesn't need an air ambulance. She doesn't need a medical escort. Um, so she calls SkyMed. She says, I've had this diagnosis. I really want to go to MD Anderson in Houston and have my treatment. And up to today, I think we have flown her uh, five or six times commercially uh, to get her treatment in Houston. So we take care of all that. She doesn't have to worry about making those arrangements. And uh, it's just one less thing to stress over. Yeah, and that's really... And that's why we're all moving to Mexico uh, is to try to lower the stress level. And and I mean, for most people, they will not have this experience. But when you become that person, um, it's not like you planned for it. It's just all of a sudden you are that person. And, and one of the things also we're, we're going to talk about kind of like how to compare plans and whatnot, because there's a number of companies that offer this service. But you mentioned in each one of these examples, how you brought the person back to Mexico. There are kind of, you know, more vacation plans, I guess, where you live in the United States and you come down to Mexico. And if something happens, they get you back to the United States. But 
most of the people, you know, if you're watching this channel, you're probably thinking about living in Mexico and, you know, maybe you have Medicare uh, back in the United States. So you've got some good insurance there, or maybe you have some other type of insurance, or you just want to get to a specialist in the US or, um, or Canada. Um, so that, you know, will get you back up there, but th then you're not home anymore. So being able to come back down here, I know that's not something that everyone offers. So uh, we will get into those, uh, those differences. Let's talk about the need for this once again, um, because doing my little bit of research, I saw, and, and using that example actually of the, the gentleman here who was in the ATV accident, he had Kaiser insurance back in the United States. And sometimes your US insurance will cover the cost of medical care in Mexico. For the most part, it's really inexpensive down here. And so a lot of people just pay out of pocket for things here. But he was in the hospital here for about a month before Kaiser said, you know what, we need to get you back up to the States. And they hired an, amb an air ambulance to take him up there uh, to continue his care. So the question I guess is, doesn't my insurance cover this? Doesn't my credit card insurance cover this? Doesn't, you know, my traveler's insurance, you know, you can get traveler's insurance. Um, so yeah, what, you know, maybe someone has this benefit and they don't even know. Is that possible? You're right. Most of those situations do cover a medical evacuation of one kind or another. There are several caveats that you can look for. One is a price cap. So, you know, maybe it's thirty, forty thousand dollars, maybe fifty thousand dollar price cap. And we haven't talked about price. So the one area that is not the greatest for the air ambulance industry is that price is not regulated. Mm -hmm. Price is not regulated at all. That means they can charge you whatever they want to charge you when you call and they have you in a very difficult situation, right? You're stressed, you're worried, you're possibly injured or someone you, you love is injured and they know that they can charge you whatever they need to charge you. So um, we have heard up to $400,000 for an air ambulance out of the Bahamas. That was a ridiculous, crazy amount, but it does happen. So yes, you may have these these services or plans that you think cover a medical um, evacuation. But like I said, you look for a price cap, you look for phrases like when medically necessary. So if you're in Cabo or in La Paz and and the the hospital can treat you, you're not moving anywhere. It doesn't matter whether you want to go or not. Next, you look for two um, nearest adequate. So maybe you're in La Paz, but they can treat you in Cabo. Well, then you're they're going to move you to Cabo, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. With SkyMed, we move you at your choice. So it doesn't matter if the doctor can treat you or the hospital is adequate or a great hospital. If you say, I want to go back to the U.S. or back to Canada, where I know my community of doctors uh, will take you. So those are the caveats you look for. Uh, the next one, especially for um, expats that live in Mexico full time, a lot of them, a lot of these other companies will have a hundred mile restriction. So if something happens to you within 50 or 100 or 150 miles, whatever their restriction is, they're not moving you again. So this is if your home is in Mexico, yeah, they'll, they'll draw a 150 mile radius around your Mexico home versus you think it's the United States home. And I think the other thing I, I was seeing was that, you know, it does, they do treat people different when you're a traveler or a vacationer or when you're an expat. And, you know, so I think um, there's a lot of little things that you should be looking out for beyond price. And so it sounds like um, we've got some of the restrictions as to like, you know, do you get to choose? Do they get to choose? Now, I mean, I can't imagine even with SkyMed, which seems like it's, you know, it's 
you get a lot of the, the consumer gets to make a lot of the choice here. So say that I stub my toe. Are you going to put me on an air ambulance back to the United States to uh, whatever, get me some ice? No, we will not do that. So the injury or the illness needs to be something that is life, limb, or organ threatening, right? So you stub your toe. We're very sorry you stubbed your toe. Put your foot up, put some ice on it. But if you stub your toe and you break every bone in your <laughs> foot, then you can call Skyvet. Okay. So, yeah. So, I think that's a good uh, distinction. So, you said it was life, limb, or organ. So, if we're going to cause permanent damage to one of those things by not getting uh, the best treatment, that's that's that point at which this kicks in. So, that is, that's good to know. Is there anything else, like, in terms of decisions and, you know, looking at um, the different options out there? Uh, other things that people should be should be looking for, and um, and we'll we'll talk more at the end about the the kind of some of the extra stuff SkyMed has to offer. But maybe there's extra stuff that your competitors have to offer too. Um, like you know, one I saw was like kidnapping insurance or something like that was included in their plan. So I was like, well, that's kind of random, but maybe that's important to some people. So yeah, let's talk about some of the other people out there and how people can help help them make that decision. First and foremost, when you're considering any kind of um, evacuation plan, and I do want to say we're not insurance and we don't claim to be insurance. We are transportation, okay? But so anytime you're looking for looking at transportation plans and comparing them, always ask for a copy of the member service agreement because that member service agreement is going to be all your fine print and we like to say the large print giveth and the fine print taketh away uh -huh. and that is where you're going to learn about all these little restrictions like when medically necessary to nearest to adequate um within a hundred you know 100 mile exclusion. So those are the things you want to look for. And many, many, many companies will not share that member service agreement with you until you have signed on the dotted line and paid. Um, with SkyMed, our member service agreement is available on my website. Um, I have a copy of it available for anybody to look at whenever they talk to me. Um, and it's that's it. That is all of our fine print. And then also, this might be good to say that that you also, many people offer levels, as does SkyBed. Most of the competition does a fine job at air ambulance evacuation, and that's it. They're going to get you out of there in a timely manner, um, as long as none of those caveats uh, exists, like you're not in an adequate facility, the nearest one is somewhere you want to go, um, you are outside of that 100, 150 mile exclusion. Um, so as long as those things are met, the air ambulance will come and get you. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you want to come back, uh, as far as I know, we're the only ones that do that. Mm -hmm. um, if you have uh, children, grandchildren, if you have any kind of vehicle, RVs, motorcycles, boats, cars, trucks, boats, did I say boats, boats, yeah. um, uh, pets, those kinds of things. If you have anything else that you worry about, if something happened to you, we help you with all of those other items. And as far as I know, SkyMed is the only one that does that. Um, there is another one that will help you with your motorcycle, but it's an additional rider. And for us, it's included. So one of, one of the great things that I think SkyMed um, stands out with, aside from the vehicle return, pet return, those sorts of things, is visitor transportation. So when you're injured or you're sick and you're in the hospital, Right from day one, you can call SkyMed and request a friend or family member come and be by your side in the hospital. And that's whether you're evacuated or not. So let's say you are injured or suddenly ill and you're in the hospital in Cabo, you choose to stay. 
you can call up SkyMed and say you want visitor transportation for, for someone, and SkyMed will arrange for them to come right away. And then when everything is okay, they'll we'll return them back home. That reminds me actually of something we talked about earlier was the fact that you'll you'll take people back wherever they want to go. So you mentioned like going back to New York or Miami or whatnot. In Mexico, sometimes the best place to go because it's affordable if you don't have a insurance policy up in the United States, the, the best hospital might be in Guadalajara or Monterey or Mexico City. And so you will take them there if that's where they want to go. Um, because as I mentioned, healthcare is, is very affordable in Mexico, but going to one of the three biggest cities, you get the best care um, that rivals anything in the United States, except for, like you said, some of the newer stuff. Um, but sometimes, actually, sometimes you can get better stuff here in Mexico because it's more cutting edge than is allowed in the United States. So some of the stuff, if you're if you're a little more, you know, willing to live on the, the bleeding edge, some of the stuff that's not yet approved for the United States, you can get that care down here in Mexico. So those are just a couple of asides. Yeah, sometimes that's true. And um, also, if you're American or Canadian and you uh, are just traveling in the U.S. or Canada, but you have medical insurance here in Mexico, and we can also write it where you're brought back if something happens to you in the U.S. or Canada. So, and remember, SkyMed covers life flight, helicopter, um, bills and ground ambulance bills, which in Mexico, ground ambulance isn't so expensive, but in the U.S. they can be quite costly. And of course, those life flight bills on a helicopter can be seventy, eighty thousand dollars too. Yeah, and that, that's good to point out because that I, I hadn't really thought about that. Is you know, most people who live in Mexico, uh, or most people who are from the states or Canada who live in Mexico, do go back. Um, you know, especially like down here in the Baja, it gets really hot in the middle of summer. So a lot of people will travel somewhere else. So it's great to know that this covers them elsewhere. And those um, life flight ambulances, as I mentioned earlier, they really don't exist in Mexico, um, but they do in the U.S. And, uh, you know, depending on what you've got for for medical coverage up in the U.S., it starts to get tricky when you start crossing borders. So many other companies will not go into a country with a level four travel advisory from the U.S. State Department. Uh, some will not go into level three. So when you think level four, you're going to think maybe Ukraine, um, Syria, those sorts of things right now. Uh, with SkyMed, well, and as we know, sometimes Mexico is level three. There's always a state or two that's level four. Um, and in those instances, SkyMed guarantees that we cover all of Mexico, no matter what the travel advisory uh, warnings are. Yes. Yeah, that's good to know because, I mean, yeah, there. I, I have another video, probably link it up here, where it talks about safety in Mexico and why why expats tend to feel so safe when they're living here and everyone else from outside is like, oh my God, it's the scariest country ever. And it really has to do with, there are some really, really unsafe places in Mexico and they just skew the statistics. And for the most part, expats don't live there. Um, that's why they feel good. But, you know, you might be on your way through Tijuana, which is probably one of the less safe places in the world um, from the murder uh, rate um, and something could happen. Yeah, in that case, you might be able to just, you know, ambulance right back over the border. But there are some areas, um, and that is good to know that you're covered no matter what. So so let's talk about, like, the different plans, not only for SkyMed, but for other people, because there are, you know, individuals, there are families, there are vacationers, there are part-timers, there are full-timers. So kind of get us, give us, the, like, overview of the... Uh, the options that people can choose from typically and also specifically with SkyMed. In general, we have 25 plan options with different pricing points. So it's the pricing is a little complicated and that's why we don't necessarily just throw it out there for everybody because it, it is a bit confusing and that's why you need a rep mm -hmm. uh, like me to help you through the process. But I can give you some generalities. So if you are in the U.S., which obviously is where uh, most of our SkyMed members are, because, again, we have the global option. So that covers you outside of the U.S. 
uh, US, Mexico, Canada, and the Caribbean. Um, but that plan for an individual is $399 a year. It includes, we had we didn't go over all 18 services, but it includes the first 12 services, which does include that air ambulance, which is what most people really want. Mm -hmm. So $399 a year for an individual family, you can spend up to six months in Mexico if you want on that plan. It's not unreasonable. I think that is that is a pretty in line price uh, for the family. Up to six months in Mexico is five ninety nine. Again, first twelve services. Um, for full time expats in Mexico, um, it's going to be about a thousand dollars a year for an individual. Now, if you are a full time expat, that is where age comes into play. And so you want to really become a SkyMed member before you turn 75. Okay. But um, the great thing about SkyMed is that we have rate protection, guaranteed rate protection, and we have guaranteed renewal. So that means no matter how old you get as you age, no matter how sick you get, um, you can always renew uh, at the same rate that you purchased your membership at. Good, good, good. This is good to know because it is like, and in different com companies, I'm sure that'll kick in at different ages or whatnot. But so essentially there'll be some times when you're looking at your age matters and definitely there's going to be some lines in the sand in terms of how many days you can spend outside the country uh, because of course there's more risk if you're there the whole year. Anything about pre-existing conditions that always seems to be a big thing with, um, with insurance type of stuff is pre-existing conditions are not included. <laughs> So with SkyMed, I can say uh, there are very few things that would absolutely keep you from becoming a SkyMed member. One of those is if you've already received an organ transplant or you're on um, a list for an organ transplant. Mm -hmm. um, another is active cases of cancer. But outside of those, we put what you have, we ask you for your medications, your pre-existing conditions. And then there's just a short 90 day waiting period um, where let's say you have um, high cholesterol, um, anything associated with high cholesterol for 90 days would not be covered. But on day 91, it is covered and then you never have to requalify again. Mm -hmm. um, other, some other lookalike plans, cancel you at 75 number one is the first thing they do i've had um i have a member who called me and she was she turned 75 she was a little over 75 and she said the plan that i had for years and it was really inexpensive because she had been grandfathered in and uh they had canceled her at age 75 with no warning and so she was looking at, at SkyMed as an option so Number one, cancel at 75. Number two is at 75, they then ask you for a medical questionnaire every year to be able to renew. Mm -hmm. So that gets complicated as you age. Okay, great. Well, this is good. I'm trying to think if there's other questions that people typically would have. Um, you know, we talked about the potential cost going up to 400,000. I think realistically, I've heard more things in the 80 to to $100,000 range, um, which is big bucks. Like that's still big bucks. And um, the gentleman was here, you know, for a, a month. Um, and I'm not sure if he was here while, while they argued over insurance to get him up there. But this is the beauty of once you sign up, you sign up in advance, you pay your money in advance, and you're covered. And I'm assuming like you mentioned the 90 days for cholesterol, but if I trip and fell in a hole, I'm assuming everything else is covered. Um, that's not related. It, it's is covered. correct. So immediately. Yeah. So, I mean, this has been super helpful to me. Um, you know. Okay. There's one more question. Say I get into a, um, a a car accident. Car accidents happen in Mexico. I get into a bad car accident in the middle of nowhere in in the Baja Peninsula because there are places where it's hours between towns. Are you going to send a helicopter to pick me up or, you know, is, is anyone doing that? What's the scoop on on that? Like, at what point is this SkyMed or any of these insurance or, or, or medical evacuation plans take over? Is it 
you know, the point that I call 911 or somewhere down the line? With SkyMed and with most other companies that I know of, you need, you have the responsibility of getting to a local hospital where you can get stabilized and get properly diagnosed. Depending on what's wrong with you, you may not be able to fly. So we need a proper diagnosis. Um, let's say you've got some sort of embolus or uh, blood clots or something in your brain that you cannot fly, um, we'll need to send ground ambulances. But the responsibility is yours to get to the nearest hospital and get stabilized and get um, a proper diagnosis. Now with, it, with Northern Baja, like Mulhe and some San Felipe, some of those more remote communities, they don't have adequate medical care. They don't have a facility with MRI equipment that can diagnose you properly. In those cases, uh, you do still call SkyMed after you get to the local clinic, and SkyMed sends an ambulance, a ground ambulance for you. Mm -hmm. That ground ambulance takes you to El Centro in um, Arizona. There, you're stabilized again, um, properly diagnosed, and then we can air ambulance you to wherever you want to go. Um, I know it's a long long process when hours and minutes count but when you're in those remote situations that is sort of the risk you're taking and with sky med it's still a process but at least you know someone is there on your side taking care of it and it's one less thing that you have to um you know really fumble with the language if you don't speak Spanish, try to figure out how to get an ambulance from Texacali or wherever. And so, yeah, consider uh, when you're traveling in those super remote areas, kind of make note of where you might want to go if something happens. Yeah, and that's um, that's a good, good point. And I, I think I, I kind of asked that question because there are areas in Mexico without the best ambulance service at all. Um, they might be volunteers. They might actually, there's a great service here in La Paz that um, it's a nonprofit that loans ambulances to communities because there are these small communities, uh, La Ventana. I think they have one ambulance. And if it's in the shop, um, they actually send the, the extra ambulance over from La Paz. So, but there's probably areas that don't have that kind of service and it can be a little bit rough. And I think I just want to make sure that it's, it's clear that this air evacuation kind of starts once you are stable. Um, so it's it's not, you know, in place of calling 911. I do have a story um, about the links that SkyMed will go to to, to get you where you want to go. Um, it, he was a motorcyclist and he was motorcycling through Alaska. Mm -hmm. And he had um, an accident and he was very remote. There was no way we could get a plane to him. There were no um, helicopters out there for him. So what we ended up doing was we put him on a cruise ship <laughs> from Alaska down to Washington State, where once he was taken off the cruise ship, then we were able to get him treated at the local hospital. And then the air ambulance came and took him, I think, to the West Coast somewhere. Mm -hmm. But it was, you know, he had a little bit of a vacation, I guess, <laughs> on a cruise. Uh -huh. But SkyMed will do whatever we need to do to get you where you want to go. Yes. Well, that is great. So if people are now convinced um, that SkyMed's right for them, or they just want to talk to you or someone at SkyMed, you know, there's going to be that option I, I kind of alluded to earlier, which is that if you're watching this, there'll be like one week from the, the day I release this or some Super Bowl Sunday in 2023. Uh, we will be in downtown La Paz and uh, Shelly is going to be joining the happy hour. The happy hour is early because we don't want to conflict with the Super Bowl. 1 p.m. Mucho Gusto will be there. Shelly will also be there, uh, be in La Paz earlier. Uh, she's also heading down to Cabo if you're watching this in that area. So there'll be a lot of opportunities to meet in person if you're here in, in Baja, California, sir. 
Um, what about if they're not? What if they're up in the United States and they're like, oh, I think I maybe want to move to Puerto Vallarta? So anywhere in Mexico, I can help you. Um, I can at least answer your questions so you can give me a call. And if we do have a rep in that particular area, like Puerto Vallarta, there is a rep in that area. So I would pass your information to that rep and they would contact you back but i'm happy to answer any questions anytime that's not a problem at all wonderful and i, I understand you also you're in the queretaro san miguel de Allende area yes i live full-time in queretaro in central mexico i've been here about seven years now and i travel to baja frequently and i love the baja too it's a they're both very different but i love them both yeah, so the, I know that you have events up there maybe a little more often because it's your neck of the woods. So people might be able to uh, look on the website and see if there's an event in their part of the the country down here in Mexico. But this is a worldwide thing. So, um, but most people watching this video are thinking about moving to Mexico. So um, with that, I hope to see you guys who are watching, I hope to see you on Sunday uh, for happy hour, uh, either this Sunday or next Sunday or the one after that or the one after that. Otherwise, I want you to watch more videos. Uh, I've got more videos from experts, people who know more than me about moving to Mexico up here. And then down here, I've got other videos from expats who are sharing their story with you to inspire you to make the move to Mexico. Hasta luego.